Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if people. Oh, it says we're live. Look at that. <laughs> wow, we're so organized. This that was great. that that was so fast. Oh, so fast. Shit. All right, I can actually uh, I can actually watch us <laughs> sort of in real time here. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to mute. Yeah, yeah. make sure um, make sure you're not getting any echoes. Yeah, I'll just mute like the YouTube one, and I'll keep this one like unmuted. Yeah, yeah. I'll see. Uh, I'll see about people joining and uh, commenting and saying that we're actually on here. I like how Adam's just looking all goofy, like angry and evil. Where's your ex? You should have an ex. At least one ex. Alex is is completely. I'm I'm wired up now. Don't give a shit. She won't get mine. <laughs> I like how we can actually. Definitely hear everything that's going on. Yep. Wait, how do I? Uh... Please get mine. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so looks like we're on. Uh... Okay. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah, this there, is yeah, uh, this is not PG thirteen, like in, in the slightest. <laughs> nope. There is there is no way. Oh oh, I, I I got it. I got it. I cheated. I got the comments there, and I got us here, and I really need another fucking monitor. So. Uh yeah, I think I need one as well, just to have everything. And it looks cool. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So uh, I guess we can. Uh, I guess we can get this show on the road. <laughs> yeah, boy. Hopefully, everybody's caught up right here. Uh, All right. So, hey, Cameron's on. All right. So apparently, people are are joining in and uh, and commenting. So. Hello there, welcome to uh, the first ever Gung Ho Geeks book club. We're going to be reviewing Horus Rising today. Well, reviewing, talking about more like. And uh, I would have the book here, but I did. I, I cheated. I did Kindle New Age stuff. And I'm joined tonight by another two members of the Gung Ho Geeks team, whom you haven't seen so far. And I have <laughs> Amber here from... Uh, from the Netherlands, still not seeing me though. <laughs> still, well, it's 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 a still. We're we're seeing a still. And yes. uh, Adam Adam is joining in from Wales. Well, I got it. So uh, this is going to be a, uh, a three time zone podcast, <laughs> which is why we um, which is why it's probably a weird weird time for the U.S. for uh, for the guys at uh, Diverse Publishing, for instance, who I know are here with us. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through what a short rundown of what each of us thought about the book. Uh, we're going to be taking your comments, so if you have anything, uh, anything you want to say, um, just drop it in the comments. I'll see it. I'll point it out. We can, uh, we can chat about it. And after that, we're going to go into uh, an open discussion between the three of us. Still, you know, checking what you guys have to uh, have to add to it now and again, and then we're gonna close it up. I don't really know how long it's gonna take because we haven't done this before. We've had a couple of technical difficulties that I'm glad we managed to get through before uh, actually going live. So, um, yeah, who wants to uh, who wants to take the first shot? I know Amber is itching to uh, to applaud the book and the choice. Fuck off! <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, uh just please comment guys otherwise we look like twats but uh yeah no Kazi, how about you actually Start me off. oh I, I was actually gonna have a sip of a sip of the soda here all right um, okay well then let ed start yeah yeah we'll let we'll let ed start all right um well yeah i mean i was happy with the choice so i have read well i remember when the horse heresy books first came out i literally bought one every month as they were coming out Read, I think the first probably sixteen or seventeen. Um, <laughs> you fucking nerd! No, I really loved them. Um, I actually did. I think it was Afghan that stopped me keeping up to date with it. I went there and I, I come back and there was too many to catch up on. But 
Um, no, I mean, I really, li- I really liked it anyway the first time round. So it's really interesting to read the same thing again. Because mm-hmm. obviously, the first three books are a trilogy. And I'm reading it um, with hindsight now. You know, I mean, okay, we, we, we know a certain amount of hindsight. We know Horace is eventually going to, you know, rise up and do everything he does. But, you know, with all the little things, the characters, the ones that I know will stay good, the ones I know won't. Hmm. Yeah, having hindsight is quite, re- you know, it's quite interesting to uh, reread the book. So, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed reading it for the second time. I one of my favourite books and one of my favourite uh, Black Library authors as well, Dan Abner, obviously with the whole Gorn's Ghost and everything else that he's written. He's a fantastic author, in my opinion. So, All right. Yeah. Well, I, haven't, I haven't actually read um, anything else from him that, that I can remember at the moment. So this was, not only was this my first Dan Abner book, um, this was my first uh, Warhammer book, which was interesting. I mean, I have, I think, I don't know if you can see, that's Dark Heresy right there. No, the other way there um, behind me. So I've played, um, I played the RPG, so that particular RPG. I played a bit of, is it Dark Death Watch, I think? And I played the video games, and I had one Warhammer 40K play, or like demo play. And <laughs> I had my ass kicked so bad that I didn't really want to play it again. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it was probably my fault as well, um, as much as there being a lot of rules and this being many, many years ago when I hadn't played a lot of uh, a lot of war games. But I didn't feel like going into it, so I just watched a lot of like miniwargaming.com and um, various other playthroughs online. So this was my first full-on lore contact, uh, and it was interesting because everything I played and came into contact with before was 40k and this obviously takes place 10,000 years before that um, and I didn't know much I knew the Horus Heresy was a thing I know there's a board game uh, I haven't played the board game so I knew what would happen but that was like apart from Horus and the Emperor I knew next to nothing about uh, everything else so it was really fun to discover this and I mostly only have positive things to say about the book I enjoyed the the banter the banter was on point I was really apprehensive when I started seeing um, jokes being slowly put into the whole thing but in the end it really 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 worked and I think uh, Carissa a friend of mine mentioned this one of the most epic lines in the book is when uh, Nero loses his hand, and uh, he meets. I think he meets up with um, with uh, uh, Garviel, and he uh, he asks him where his arm went, and he's like, "Well, it was slowing me down, so I left it behind." That was beautiful, just beautifully done, and every bit of banter and every um, every joke is just weaved into the setting, and it's just awesome. The bad thing. Um, I could say is that the ending of the book felt really abrupt. This may have been just me wanting to read more. Um, I know, I know, it's a trilogy. I know there's a couple more books, and I plan on reading at least the first three of the fucking fifty odd book series that we have. Um, but it kept it kept a steady rhythm, and then it went high when then when they um, ended up on murder. I think the planet was. And then it just dropped into negotiating for a bit, and then it just ended. Like in a few pages, everything just went to shit, and then it ended. And I thought that was, I don't know, it felt a bit rushed to me. That's, I guess, the main negative I have about the book. The rest was just awesome, an awesome read. So, um, <laughs> Amber, what did you think of the book? Fuck. I was hoping you was going to pass me by. Uh, just um, adds. Um... You're going to have to speak up a bit, because apparently you're really soft compared to me and uh, and Kazi. Uh, what I thought of the book. I hated it. <laughs> the first 50 pages, I hated it. 50 pages after that, I still hated it. And uh, 50 pages later, I still hated it. But it, it kind of grew on me. But uh, I, st- I, I, like, didn't, I, didn't, I, I didn't finish it. Um, so I'm like completely unprepared here. Um, no, not really. I, I did look up some things. Um, no, I, I, I did like some people. 
I just hated like the initial thing. It's like how many big words can you use in one sentence, and how many you know commas can you use in one sentence? It just I don't know. Probably because I was hungover when I started it. I think that actually fucked it up a bit. That might be one of the reasons. So what you're saying is it grew on you like a tumor. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I did. I, I. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was, there was. There was. Yeah. I don't know how to put this. I will finish it in time, and I'll probably read the other two books after this because I. I do like Loken because he's funny, um, mm -hmm. and I. I do like um, the general com com camaraderie of the books, but it was just a drag. It's just I don't know. Especially the first 50 pages, I just wanted to, well, kill you in various slow and painful ways. Hey, I, I only set the book up. This is what I was talking about uh, as I made the rule of not voting for your own book, not only to make people choose something else because, well, obviously, if you have it up for vote, you're going to vote for it. But then I can just take, you know, plausible deniability. I didn't vote for it. And I didn't vote for the next one, which I hate. I absolutely hate. You brought it up. Bro. I brought it's it up, and it got that it had to be voted on. Both and of you, these books are my <laughs> fault. <laughs> you have like a bunch of nerds. No offense, guys, and you come at this book, a Warhammer book. You know, Horus Rising, which is like one of the most famous settings of Warhammer ever, and you expect people not to pick that. And then, yeah, the month after, you do this one thing where you do like Firefly, which is like. Huh? the holy grail of every nerd who, you know, calls himself a proper nerd, and you expect people not to pick that. You have poor taste in books, apparently, because they suck. Well, okay, Horus Rising didn't exactly suck. I should yeah, no, give it a chance, but that other book, wow. I promise, I promise the next one sucks like its life depends on it. Um, so uh, Cameron here mentioned that... Um, uh, Abnet, in his in his view, is one of the best authors, and that uh, he's only experienced um, 40k, not 30k. Uh, obviously, this was my first contact, so I don't have much to say about that. But Adam, how was the the switch? Because you've read more, and well, you know more about the lore. How was the switch from 40k to 30k? Not only having read those, but just the difference, you know. Uh, well, for me, it was something. That, I mean, I'd really. I'd been anticipating it when they said they were going to write out you know, 40k law. By the time the first book came out for about 15 years, mm -hmm. it was something I was really looking forward to. Um, yeah, it's... It, I mean, a lot of it, it's sort of... Because I'd had a lot of background, although it was the first ever 30k book written, I mean, all the codexes and such, uh, White Dwarf articles, you know, there was sort of little snippets how the legions were different when they they weren't chapters they were legions mm -hmm. roughly how it's formed but it was good to it was really good to actually see it from the beginning um you know that you've got the original legions it goes into it more with some other books but how they a lot of them came from terror would find their primark in this particular world then start recruiting from there like um i can't remember it's since Scientia or wherever it was Loken and all that are from yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird word that reminded me of the like Cthulhu mythos. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah they do borrow lots of words from uh, other laws and histories and like uh, yeah games workshop. But no, it's it was one of them ones so to get into. But to be fair, I mean Dan Abner has written it as if it is a very much a forty k book. The, the way he writes, you know, the banter with them and everything else, it it wasn't much of a difference for me. Other than the fact that you've got Primarchs there and there's no religion, or at least not until the very end, um, because, you know, re religion's forbidden. Everybody's atheist at this point. The mm -hmm. Emperor is a god. He, he is someone special, but he's not a god. He's a godlike person, but there is no religion and religion is forbidden. That side of it, obviously, is very different, you know, um, with all the lost lore and the, you know, the following 10,000 years to reach to the 40k point. They don't even understand basic mechanics and haven't evolved from that point because they worship their machines as a god. <laughs> so, yeah, it's 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 funny because in 30k they're more advanced, I suppose, in some ways than 40k. 40k's they're kind of like that's like the hillbilly to the 30k world, really, isn't it? 
there's also a weird thing with the uh, again this takes place ten thousand years before what we're generally used to. Mm. I I found that really I I still can I mean I I don't know enough of, about the lore to say much about it, but ten thousand years without um, technological advancements just sounds weird to me. No matter the reasoning, it's just it's it's a little eh, my suspension of disbelief is getting damaged, like. Right. I got I got light wounds and and I'm I'm taking mortal ones. Yeah, well, I mean, if anything, they've lost certain technological advances. For example, in 30k, although it wasn't covered in this book, uh, but in in that millennia, the space marines have jet bikes rather mm -hmm. than you know the the sort of more boxy Volvo looking motorbikes they they ride the way used to. Um, but yeah, it's I mean, it actually lost a lot of technology with it. So. Yeah, it's been it's it it is mad to think over such a stretch of time. Um, you know, not much has really improved, if anything. It's kind of just all depleted. But of course, in came uh, chaos, and with it, religion. So, yeah. And, uh, I do uh, like how this how this one person that actually says something about it gets killed. You have this one guy, the remembrancer, remember of her. Oh, yeah, that, that word. word. Yeah, that, that word. Fucking word. He gets like fucking drunk <laughs> and then goes on a rant about how, you know, it's basically looking into their future on that planet with the false emperor and everything. And it's like, yeah, guy speaks truth, gets killed. So he, doesn't, he doesn't get killed, though. He, he just get, gets beaten really bad and then he gets, well, uh, he gets saved. Oh, he, he, look. I, I didn't get any further than that. So, you know, I mean, he got stomped on his chest. And I was like, well, that's Rip Guy. You did. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Okay, great. Great. He survives. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I like that. It's like a prophet thing. He doesn't get killed. Woohoo! And then, of course, there's the other remem remembrance. Because so, that's when you the first time Chaos was encountered. Mm -hmm. uh, in that uh, ice world in that cave. And the other remembrance... Uh, who at the end that's your first sign of religion then you know and she's there she's got a little uh, shrine set up in her room worshiping the emperor as a god yeah, yeah yeah it's really it's really gone to that I, I i really like that thing that um i guess the arc that she came within inches of her life and it basically turned her around into this religious person Wait, so what? and there's I thought it was a he. No, the he got beaten, and we're oh, talking okay. about the she that was um, uh, Loken's like yeah. personal remembrance, or like. Oh yeah, the one private. I like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Supposed to show the one I like actually turns into a right bitch. I should have read <laughs> the book. What the fuck? <laughs> you need to finish this fucking book. Where's the? Where's the? Oh shit! Yeah, no. Trying I read to a find story, a... though, like like a plot synopsis thing, but they don't really bring in the remember fuck that word. Those 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 guys, because you know they they keep it centered. They're on the... basically reporters, aren't they? Yeah, pretty much. I, like, sort of. I can't. I can't find that. Oh, official remembrancer, Mirsadi. That was her, right? I think so. The document. Let me get, the... let me get this. Or was it the imagist? No, it's not the imagist. It's so, the documentarist, then. I think so, yeah. And of course, the poet got beat up. I mean, come on. Leave the poets alone. They're bohemian. Yeah, fuckers. he kind of reminded me of you. I don't know. Really? Yeah, so, just a bit. In what sense that I, I ignore know, authority sure. and walk <laughs> off on my own into the Pretty ruins much, and look yeah. for my doom? Yeah, that sounds like something you would do. All right, I'm not that bad. Come on. I, mean, <laughs> well, I value my hide. We're online on a daily basis. We, you know, we see yeah. going off. The <laughs> no. Come on, dude. I You've been in Facebook jail more than I don't know everyone ever. Yeah, I need to. I need to hide my shit better. Um, <laughs> we've got we've got someone from uh, Devers Publishing here. I don't know if it's a uh, if it's Scott or or who, but. Um, they're saying that uh, Blade Runner and Back to the Future haven't really predicted the future, um, the advancement of technology either. I think Blade Runner takes place in 2019, right? In Dude, the original. I'm still waiting for my hoverboard and my Nikes that actually, you know, lace themselves. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Especially I mean, the hoverboard. I couldn't care less about the fucking Nikes. I want a fucking hoverboard. All right, Scott's here. Hi, Scott. Um, 
Yeah, so the images took the the pics, which was uh, Mersa D. I guess that's how you. I don't think it's Mersa Die, because that would be too on the nose. Should be. Um, mm, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Also, the first time I saw this um, this uh, dramatis persona, couple pages. I don't know if it's one page or a couple pages in the in the actual book. It's a couple pages for me here. I pages in the book. I literally went, yeah, no, till deer flip. I'm just gonna go into this blind and see what happens. But it was really helpful, um, helpful in the beginning. <laughs> and then yeah. at the end, I forgot about it again when the latter um, uh, space marines came in, and you know the the final bits, the final um, characters popped up. I forgot to, I, I didn't come back and, and check again to see which fleet they're with or what the hell. But um, it was really, I didn't think I needed one of these ever in a book until this one came up and I'm really, really happy it got it. And now I, I really don't want to see a book without it because it helps the doofuses and the noobs like me. Well, I'm uh, helping for this book, yeah. Just to be like, who the fuck are you? Oh, wait, <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, just flip, flip, flip. Oh yeah, I remember. I don't. I don't need it in other books because you know there's not like a bunch of people. That yeah, there's not that many and and stuff. But like, yeah. yeah, it was it was good to be like, wait a minute, who are you again? What were you doing? Ah, oh, you're that asshole. Good. Continue to read. Yeah. Well, it kind of makes sense as well because you know that no matter what your native country, a lot of those names will be quite alien. Oh yeah. It's always easier oh, yeah. to, uh, when you read a normal book and everyone's called John and Steve or Vladimir and Dracula in your case, Cosy. You know, it's you know when you read it in your native languages, it's easier to remember the names. You don't need it, but when they have these weird sort of you know pseudo Latin type names, an index is very valuable. Do yeah. I read fantasy? When do people ever have normal names? Uh, I mean, do people in? Uh... In the Witcher series, have that that weird a name? Those have weird names. Like no, Geralt. it's not so no. many. Like everyone yeah, no. here has a role, and they're all sort of kind of significant, and they're all well, at least somewhat important to the story. Whereas normally, if I read a book, I've like three people that are actually important, and the rest is just you know fillers and die. Uh, well, <laughs> not always, but you know what I mean. And here they all have this little thing. It's like. Yeah, yeah they're like, like Captain, Seventh Company, Lodge Master. All right, I'm going to forget two of those at least. Mm -hmm. I liked uh, um, Abaddon and Torgadon every time they use the, the last names. I thought they were talking about fucking dinosaurs for some reason. I just <laughs> well, had that, these that flashes of these like huge scaly things for some, it, you know, it, a, a little in the beginning. It just seemed funny to me. It, it passed, but... That was a bit confusing initially when they switched between first names and last names mm -hmm. a lot. And I was like, hold up, who's that? Oh, that that's him. Like, okay, cool. And then, what the fuck? Who? Oh, okay, yeah. Like, yeah, that was a bit confusing, but... Yeah, well, what, what I liked is when the whole Mournival started up, because obviously that's like oh, yeah. the Masons of 30k. You mm -hmm. know, it's like your secret fraternity thing. Now that... And what I did like in that is obviously local, we, you know, he had all his reserves about going in, but when, you know, with the whole thing anyway, when he became part of Mournival, you know, um, I liked how that progressed. I liked how he settled in with that and the banter then developed as, because he obviously, he was good friends with Torgadon, but the other two, he didn't really know, mm -hmm. apart from Dumpit Abaddon. Uh, you know, because... Everyone knows Abaddon. Yeah. Yeah, the spoiler. Um, I do like how his character grew with those others as they gradually accepted him when he said or did the right thing, and you know, you know, it was just himself. And I liked seeing that more human side of Horus, and especially with uh, Sanguinis, mm -hmm. the Blood Angels guy. Now, obviously, that's the one part of 30k everyone knows before this that Horus strikes down the Emperor, and then it's Sanguinis that strikes down Horus. I mean, that's where the Blood Angels get their black rage from. It's his memory in their gene seed, you know, mm -hmm. within 40k. It, it's from that moment. And it's much more important to read it in this and the following books and realise how close friends those two were, those two brothers, you know, the closest friendship, you know. 
I, I, you know, out of all, all the Primarchs he did get on with, with, with that, you know, the, the ones that he did. I mean, it was especially close to that one in particular. And so, when you've got your your, your hindsight knowing what's going to happen at the end of the Horus Heresy novels, it's quite sad in a way as well to realise how how much those two fell. You know, you know, from where they were to where they ended up. So I did like that side of it. There's also um, speaking of that. There's also the the fact that there there's quite a bit of politics in this book, like 30k and you know space marine politics and Horus leading everyone and um, the Mournival has uh, like a centerpiece spot in that because they act. <clears throat> they have a couple moments when they act like what Horus needs them to act, and so that he can turn people to his side. And going into this, I thought this was just going to be, you know, your run-of-the-mill Space Marine Legions just trampling over everyone. And I actually expected a lot more focus on uh, on the war machines themselves and uh, uh, the, the weapons and the equipment. And although Loken basically spent like 15% of the book polishing his armor, <laughs> there wasn't really that much focus on um, on the army side, at least uh, uh, as I expected it, there was some. There were some good political moments and some good underlying. Um, what would you call these? I guess inner workings, basically, of, of what happens behind that that never-ending wall of steel and flesh. You know, three meter tall behemoths just trembling into battle. And I thought that was that was again done in a way that. Um, kept things interesting, and I've read. Uh, I've recently read um, Star Wars Tarkin, which is written by uh, James Luceno, which also has some really great political uh, political outlooks and some really great political discussions and and reveals. And this had shades of that in that it kept it kept it interesting. It kept it engaging. It kept it uh, and it kept it moving along. There were uh, stagnant pages you you had either um dialogues rolling over into um uh, you know pushing events forward or uh the inner feelings of loken or you know his observations again keeping the ball rolling so that was a great uh a great way to move things along that i wasn't really expecting so another uh, another bit of praise there amber another reason that you need to read this book for <laughs> I will eventually, you know, if I don't have like a month from hell, and I, I probably should start it again and not be hungover. And uh, I don't know. The thirty k books going into everything they do with the Primarchs as well. I mean, that's something that in forty k, obviously there there aren't the Primarchs, but you don't have that um, necessarily in a lot of the books. With the okay, here's the very top level of command. And let's make them really human, have doubts, have mm. concerns, and all of that. Um, I, and that's what the the ser the series of books is really good at. And just as Horus has the morning of all, we see Dawn come up there, and um, when Rogel Dawn gets there, he has two Im Imperial Fist Marines that are his equivalent of the morning of all. You know, it's it's obviously something that's common because. You could see them really unwind. I mean, Horus really starts his banter. There's two different types of his banter. There's his banter he does with his guys to be likable and all that. Then there's the banter he does with the other Primarchs, which is much more childlike because he's finally with an equal there. So they don't have that the rest of the time. And to have that just handful, you know, that inner circle of people, if you were to be a Primarch, that would be... I mean, that would be a must for your own personal sanity, if nothing else, you know? Um, if you don't have people you can fall back on, do you know what I mean? You know, so it's, it's good to see that sort of human aspect to them, you know? Um, just, you know, because we've only ever seen the artwork and that before these books, you know? Yeah, so, yeah no, there's, there's, definitely, um, there's definitely focus on the humane aspect and this okay okay stop stop you know stop taking on the noob i really don't know which <laughs> primark returns in 40k like i generally have no idea 
Robu. Oh, it's it's yeah, yeah. of course yeah? it's Bobby. Mm-hmm. It's it's Bobby Gilliman. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Yeah, I knew uh, that. It's just blanking. Because uh, Cam- <laughs> Cameron mentioned here that uh, one of the Primarchs returns, and I'm like, huh? And I forgot the whole there's the whole Twitter page of him waking up and seeing the shit that's come come to pass and uh, trying to put things in order. Yeah. 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 I'm supposed to return. I've, I'm obviously I'm personally hoping uh, one of my first uh, favorite Primarchs. He might be returning as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's you do like the space walls when you're as hairy as me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I actually have. I only have one codex here, and it's the Space Wolves from I think one edition ago. That's all you need. Yeah, well, I was I was gonna get into it, and I have some some Terminators that yeah. I assembled, but no. yeah, that, that was about it. I'm gonna use them in uh, in uh, Kill Team. Well, that's gonna be fun. So, oh, <laughs> there you go, girly man. Um, so the first three books are a trilogy. I'm I'm really looking forward to reading those. On your uh, own time, you're definitely on, on not my own time. Them. It's it's fine. It's a book thing. I, I'm like, pretty sure. No, 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 no. There's, a, there's already sure. there's already discussions going on about uh, how you have to read the next book to us, so you don't have to read it. Really? Oh, that that would be very interesting me trying to do all the voices and keep my composure i swear i so i started reading that book uh, going off on a tangent here for just a couple minutes because i'm really pissed i have two rants two rants on firefly because not only is this book shit on a stick like flaming shit on a stick uh the boom studios comic run that's currently coming out is also dumb dumb as a bag of 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 dead rocks it like the artwork is shit, the plot is shit. There's Speaking a thing of that artwork, happens. By the way, yeah, there's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're <laughs> we're coming back to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, there's uh, so there's this scene that I I'm gonna have to talk about, which is just dumb. But coming from um from Horus Rising, where everything was, it was so it's a it's a nerd's book, right? It features big strong fuckers in armor doing war and, you know, talking about how to do war. That's um, strangely homoerotic. <laughs> oh, there's that bit, there's that bit um, in the stock. <laughs> get, get your beard out of my face. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, so there's that bit in the beginning where um, uh, the Remembrancer and Loken first meet and she's like admiring him and taking, uh, taking in the view, so to speak. And she, she she's admiring his his like his girth and his muscles and whatever. And then at, at the end she goes, "What a waste!" And I remember these fuckers are <laughs> sterile. And I'm like, "Yeah, shit, what a waste!" Because I was in, you know I was enjoying the description. I was like, hmm, "Okay, okay, Logan's, Logan's a strapping fellow." Yeah. So I forgot what I was saying. Yeah. So after this, which was a cut above in in the way it was presented. Um, cause even when the banter was on, it kept a serious tone and it wasn't, uh, a shit take like my, that's what she said joke. Um, it was, you know, humorous, but done in a, in a elevated way, I guess, if you, if you can say that Firefly treats you, the book treats you like you're a dumb fuck who doesn't know anything about the universe. But they're also expecting you to know stuff about the universe because they make references to the show all the time. It's like half a page reference, one page reference, and the references are done so poorly. Like so, so, so bad. It's incredible. And speaking of artwork, yes, Amber please. had something. Oh about wow. This <laughs> that artwork shit. <laughs> no, really, really, really. Um, it's, I mean, it's I, a I, I've, I've seen, I, I, I've seen some some uh, Black Library uh, books before, obviously, mm-hmm. um, and I, I don't know. When you showed us the cover art, like this is the book we're gonna read. This is what it looks like. I just, I, I, I thought you did like a bad Photoshop to make it look really stupid because those two guys without the helmets, it just looks, it just looks, I don't know. I just, I didn't think it was the serious art. I just thought you, you know, either did a Photoshop or you just grabbed a picture somewhere and I don't know. And then I got the book 
and I saw the book <laughs> and, you and saw I was that it like, was real. oh my God, it's not a joke. It's real. And I've actually had this discussion with multiple people and they all had the same thing. It's like, oh my, this just looks wow. And that for a book that's so iconic and like the start of this series and very important and blah, I was like, yeah, that artwork though, it's, yeah. It's it's like that uh, it's like that bit at the end of uh, the Hobbit with uh, Tauriel when Kili's dead and she asks why does it hurt so much and then uh, Thranduil comes in with the book cover because it's real ah. and just sticks it in her face just weep some more it's real no I wish my Photoshop was that good actually yeah I, I thought maybe you actually picked it up somewhere online and someone making making fun out of it and I was like no way this can be real and then I saw it and I was like this is it, it definitely it looks like um it looks like an old Starcraft cutscene like from the olden days yeah but like a worse. like a Baldur's Gate intro yeah. movie type shit. I think Gothic Two had better graphics than that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 um, I, I think '90s games you used to play yeah. on your four eight six had better graphics than this. <laughs> <laughs> like, no offense. I mean, yeah, sure. Someone spent a lot of time making this look awful. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Well, they probably thought they made it look really good because, uh, you know, uh, but it's just, no, it's horrible. Well, I think well, there's the thing, there's I mean, self-aware cheese in this. Sorry, Adam, go ahead. Uh, so that's kind of the thing. I mean, to be fair, it was my first commission. Um, I was proud of it. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, fuck off. <laughs> you wish, dude, you wish. <laughs> Did you use your left foot on that? No, I think he used his dick on and it. And your, your left foot only? <laughs> I do food on it. No, um, yeah, no, I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not the greatest. But, you know, um, they're, they're probably quite limited on choice for 30k artwork at that time. So there's a lot more of it now. So, <laughs> and a lot of the books, some of them are fantastic. Look at the Burning of Prospero, um, stuff mm -hmm. like that. The covers on that do look much better. I wasn't particularly keen, but... You know, never ju judge a book by its cover, do you? But so, I do. Uh, That's the whole thing. I actually <laughs> buy books based on their cover, and it, it hasn't gone wrong ever so far. Um, I Purely on the cover, if, I, if I'd see this, you know, and I'd be like, no. <laughs> Just no. Just buy it for that, for that uh, cousin of yours that you don't like. All sorts of no. I mean, no. Just no. Just, just no. <laughs> It's like I can't stress this enough. There's just so much nope going on. It's it's nope. It's 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 a little more difficult for me because I uh, I generally buy like physical books. This was the fir uh, the second book I, I ever read on a Kindle, and it's not my Kindle. It's it's my wife's. I bought it for her. Uh, so I generally you know hold them in my hand, and I buy them based on smell. Uh, so I go into the shop, and I actually buy the book based on smell because I'm half fucking blind and I have to hold it really close to my face and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna smell that thing for several hours so I have to like the smell of the book so if I don't like the smell of that I'll just buy a different edition I'll just go something well, else it actually smells okay oh well, there you go at least smelling the book now it doesn't smell too bad I've, I've had worse definitely and oh. I I've bought a lot of uh, books online lately, so I couldn't rely on smells, so I had to rely on looks. And I was really excited when I saw the cover for the Firefly and the jacket as well, the, the dust or whatever you call it. It's awesome, and the book is uh, brown with gold lettering, and it just looks so fucking amazing. And it actually smells great, too. <laughs> the book is shit. Sorry, Adam. You're fucking weird, mate. <laughs> Who fucking said I've got five hundred of the fucking things I've said? I couldn't tell you what a single one smells like, whether or not they have a different smell. I don't don't you don't you like like the, the the smell of books? That that's the one thing I I, I hate about the Kimbles because okay, right Kimbles Kimbles Kimbles, Kimbles? Kimbles? No. No. no Kobo I have a Kobo <laughs> Kindle Thank you Wow Fuck Damn Shit No but but really I do like the smell of books. If you get a new book and you open it and you read and it it it. it Thank you. I sit here somewhere midden in. Topper. Geweldig. Houd je back. Oh no, seriously, don't don't swallow your tongue. Nah, I wasn't. Shy uh, had, uh, had some questions. No, but I, I I do enjoy books, but it's not actively smelling as Cozzy does, but it, it it does have a certain 
No, I don't smell. The books do. No, I like the, I, I like normal smells. You know, like cheese. I don't like old book smell though. Well, Cameron's saying he prefers old book smell. I actually like old book smell over new book smell. I do like new board game way, smell, but though. not if, not if it's like. I used to have a lot of old books, and then the old book smell would like be the dominant thing, and yeah. that just like it just gets a bit too much after a while. I mean, if you have like a small room and all you smell is old book smell, yeah, I don't know. You just start to throw around dirty socks just to get rid of it, or that might just be me. How how did you go straight to dirty socks? Because what that's, that like... masks an old book smell smell. Huh. What what did you try before that, or did you go straight to the smelly socks? Did you think of well, like to have the deepest, socks, dankest so like... <laughs> smell, like moldiest smell? All right, socks will do it. Fuck it, throw some socks in the library. It was either that or cats. I mean, sheds. <laughs> you have to choose. I mean, I I'd, I'd go with cats. Cats is fine, really. <laughs> yeah, I I try I'll ferrets be... before I try old socks. Oh, ferrets they smell. Fuck. Ferrets yeah. thing, but no, I'm just picturing Cosy now. Stalking his library, sort of peering by. <laughs> <laughs> you you wouldn't be wrong, buddy. You wouldn't be wrong. I know. Genuinely, if there's two editions of a book, I will pick based on smell. And also, I go, I go hardback most of the time, but you know that's another thing. If there's two editions of a book, I'm I I I pick the one that looks prettiest. And I I definitely I'm a sucker for you know the whole embossed thing with the faux oh, yeah. book and the golden letters and everything because you know that's what I like for my RPG books. And I I yeah I do like the luxury uh, things for uh, for my regular books as well. Though yeah, I, no, I generally end up with. Uh, just um, paperbacks because that's what I can actually afford. <laughs> <laughs> I like paperbacks are cheaper. Also, I like, I mean, don't, yes, a nice hardback, but to be honest, they're only, I, I don't like reading a hardback book. You know, I've already got a, a chest up here. When the <laughs> you know? like, I don't want the book to be up there and I'm sort of like struggling to read the top lines. So I just want the book in front of me. That'll do. So. Plus, they're heavier. And since, well, okay, the past two holidays, I've actually picked my my Kobo instead of actual books because I have to pack light because otherwise, you know, I have to check in my luggage and I don't want to do that because I'm Dutch and cheap. Um, so, uh, yeah, paperbacks have this thing where they're lighter than you know the hardbacks, so I could actually bring more books. Mm -hmm. There's also the uh, there's also the added benefit of fitting more into the library. Like most of my this True. what you see behind me is my half of the thing, and then there's the wife's half, which is basically full of med school books. And there's it's basically like half old, half new, and it just it's it's good. The the uh, smells even out in the end. <laughs> so so there's that. But there's also the benefit yeah the benefit of fitting more of them because everything you see behind here. These are all uh, paperback, and then there's the two thrones at the end, which are hardback. Because you know, thrones, thrones. You have to, you have to have the hardback for that. Cameron says he prefers paperback as well. Scott says he likes them hard, which of course he does. Well, I'm not, I'm not surprised at all by that. Uh, but the one thing about paperbacks versus hard, ah, hardbacks mm -hmm. is uh, they don't hit as hard. Unless they're the Bible, then they hit equally hard. Yeah, depends. Depends on the depends on the religion as well. True. True. Is it New Testament? Is it Old Testament? Uh, just the whole shit combined. How but, far uh, east you go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, but, but seriously, I mean, I've I've tested this on Choice Head extensively, <laughs> and um, I do prefer hardbacks to Wecker over the head to paperbacks. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll, uh, this this has been a very informative, uh, informative <laughs> podcast. I have to say, we're yeah, finding I, more I, and more I, things about. I, uh, this is this great. Is I should I should I should read the book less often. Like, I, no, that's not what I wanted to say. I'm hey, never going to read how, the book. <laughs> how about we do that? Yeah, you start reading. Stop at about a hundred pages in, and yeah. then you can come in and like, oh shit, I should have read this. Shit. Yeah, that's good. And that'll do. Just derail everything. That's good. <laughs> Adam, you wanted to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right, this Firefly thing, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I, I voted for Horus Rising. Right. So I'm reading Horus Rising. Because I thought the vote was more just let people know what you were going to read. 
No, See, that's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I made that clear. I voted for false gods. And okay. Go for the trilogy. Mm -hmm. uh, them again. So, do you mind if I throw in some references on false gods on next month? Uh, Far Cry one. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Actually, I might be able to because I'm like halfway done with Firefly. I'm actually such a big nerd because I finished. Um, can I finished... we just like what was the second book in line? Can we just do that one? I can check it out. But I was I was such a big nerd that I uh, I finished the Horse Rising on I think the twenty sixth or twenty seventh something like that, and then on New Year's Eve we had a bit of downtime or it was the thirtieth or something. We had a bit of downtime, so I started reading um, Firefly. And the lip I got from my wife, because she knew it was the January book, and this was still December, and she was like, you fucking nerd, you couldn't wait, you just had to start early, you bookworm. It was, uh, it was rather endearing. <laughs> uh, let's see, the options were here. The second book was... Oh yeah, well, it's false. It's a it's a toss up between a swan song and false gods. We actually have more people like <laughs> really not content with doing this. I know. Uh, uh, I know Cameron said he he wasn't really looking forward to uh, to reading it, and uh, I couldn't can't can't really blame him. And uh, but Raul actually read it almost all the way through. He said the plot just doesn't do anything, and the references are shit. So um, we'll we'll talk about that um, over the next couple of days and see how we can squeeze it in. I I'm I'm probably going to read them both, uh, False Gods and uh, and the Firefly one, yeah, just because I'm just because I'm a nerd. I'm 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 gonna skip out of uh, Firefly one because for me to actually get it, it'll be like thirty euros or something. Oh, I can send you a PDF if you want. Oh yeah, sure. I'm gonna have this horror on my PC. <laughs> No, 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 no. I just changed. I just changed fire skins. I, I don't think it'll pass. Um, but yeah, and it's it's actually for me to get it on my Kobo. It would be like sixteen, which sounds like a mm. bit of a waste of money if it's yeah. really that bad. A little bit, yeah. So, but yeah, I can do false gods. I, mean, I still have to finish this fucker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Adam. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, I'm going to read False Gods, and I'm going to read the third one as well, just because, you know, that's the trilogy. But I don't mind, you know, if I've got to do the Firefly one, um, is it available in an audio dr drama? It should be. It should be. Yeah, I'll just listen to it when I'm, I don't know, having a shower or something. That'll do. I'll, go, I'll, get, I'll get the bullet <laughs> it's, point. That's a long fucking shower. All right. <laughs> oh, and uh, Cosy, you can send the PDF to Jolene. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I will. I will. No, I will read it. I'll be good. I'll read it. I'll just, yeah, you'll have to send me the PDF for that one because, uh, yeah, uh, I know. me as well. I'll just skim through it and pretend I've read it and was amazing. No, I, I know, uh, I know, um, Scott's bought the, uh, like the whole, uh, a whole 12, 12 book box and he's going to be reading them all. So, wow, Scott, that's really hardcore of you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really awesome. And so, we're definitely going to have people still reading, um, 40K so we can still talk about that. Um, Eric is asking, hi Eric, um, if the Firefly, Firefly one takes place after Serenity, it doesn't, it takes place, as far as I can tell, right after, at some point after the, um, the show stops. So everybody's still, uh, there and they're still going through their day-to-day -day routine of, uh, you know, find a crew, find a job, keep flying, which is kind of fucking boring, to be honest at this point. A fun fiction book. Rather than an original writer. Oh no, it's it's approved. It's it's like canon. It's just Whedon approved. Oh right, okay, okay. Yeah, which makes it even I'll shittier. It I do like the film. I do like the series. So yeah, I'll give it a bash. Yeah, I think we all do here, which is why it's such a big disappointment for me. I have a pile of comics and and board games, Firefly related. Uh, Cameron says he's gonna read uh, False Gods as well. So there we go. We got a we got a crew for um, for Warhammer going forward. It's good to know, Scott, that you're very hard like your books. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, mental images here. D a lot, uh, so so many images <laughs> throughout this whole thing. So, um, should we uh, should we end this on a like a thumbs up or a thumbs down for the book and a pass for Amber? <laughs> well, now, like I said, I I I. I... 
I will read it. I will give it a fair chance. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, it grew on me, and there are some likable characters in it, and I have discussed it with some people, and uh, at least the first three of this entire series sounds like they could potentially be okay. Um, so it's like, man, it's not a thumbs down. I'll, um, I'll give it a thumbs up for now, unless it really disappoints me. All right, you can you can you can come come back to that later. Yeah. It's uh it's definitely it's it's getting a couple thumbs up for me, and I'm definitely gonna read at least Just the, the first. Nothing else. Two of them. Two even. Wow. Yeah, like as many as I have nipples, I guess. <laughs> um, hard nipples for Logan. Hashtag hard nipples for Logan. Um, <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely getting made. Um, Adam? Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely, obviously, uh, like I said, it's one of my favourite books, period. So, yeah, no, it's a massive thumbs up from me, and uh, like I say, I, I just love it. I love it. It's, it, you know, obviously, I, I, I think I first got into the hobby in the late 80s, so, so yeah, it was it was something I've been eagerly awaiting for years, so, I was, I was, yeah, I love it. Thumbs up. All right, all right, well, uh, that's, that's, um, Cross the board thumbs up with a uh, with a still pending on uh, on Amber to finish it. Any uh, any additional thoughts you got you got here to add, guys? You yeah. asking? I'm asking. Oh, um, well, yeah, we got uh, we got thumbs up from Scott as well. If yeah, if uh, if there are any more comments, uh, any questions, anything else you'd uh, like to ask us or you know cuss at us or whatever, it's the internet. I mean, everything goes. <laughs> Please don't cuss. It's our first time. Be gentle. Yeah, let us cuss first, which we have, to be honest. Yeah, I think I cuss most. Okay, yeah. here's a thought. Should I should I order the um, physical books or should I keep going uh, Kindle on them? Well, if you can't sniff them, you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't sniff them, download them. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> How's I'll, that for a hashtag? I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll send you the first three books. I'll do that for you, mate. Oh, that's sweet, dude. Because it's a lot cheaper over here than it's your end anyway. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, I I, 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 I generally found deals on Book Depository because they have uh, free shipping. Because sh Basically, shipping kills me. Like, it's not just the conversion rate because, well, R Romania's crap at that. Um, it's, it's also shipping, which is awful. Yeah, the covers do keep sucking, so it doesn't really matter which format I read them in. <laughs> That's a fair <laughs> point, Scott. Oh wow! All right, a full of sucky covers. Woo! Yeah, can I? So if I wait, if, what does a Kindle shelf look like? Do you like print out the first page and then fold it and then put it in the thing, or you, do you just plop this thing in and just go, "Hey, this is my library." Five hundred thousand books. Because I'm 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 such a nerd, or I don't know if it's a nerd thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think ninety percent of the books I have on my Kobo, I actually have the hard copy stuff as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Unless they're like uh, e-reader uh, versions only, that I don't have it. But otherwise, I just I have books because I don't know. I just like actual books. The only reason I have my Kobo is because holidays and packing. Gotcha. All right. Well, um, Cameron says he doesn't know if he'll be able to join on the other podcasts. I was thinking we can uh, reschedule to, you know, a time that's more advantageous to the entire globe. Uh, yeah. We'll see, we'll see about scheduling this better next time because we were really, uh, you know, doing it as we as we went. So it was kind of out of the blue, even even for us. So I was like, oh shit, it's. it's January 8th and we haven't done this um, so we were aiming for the weekend but you know life happens but we shall overcome all right yes. so um, <coughs> excuse me so if uh, nobody has anything else to add should we stop it here for now yeah because I'm fairly sure Joplin's gonna wake any minute and she's gonna meow her asses off so all right so good to know so and she woke up I mean seriously I'm psychic guys I'm not even kidding. She just woke up. Dodging the cat. All right. Well, <laughs> we also have a recommendation from Cameron, the Spinward Fringe sci-fi series. All right. We'll look into that. We'll, uh, we'll chat about it in the group. 
Yeah. So uh, we can we can keep the chat going if you guys have uh, anything else to add in the group because you know where to find us. We're all in the group. I'm mostly on the page. I mostly run the page, so you know that. Um, so to do stuff. You you also yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> and Adam said he's got like 50 articles lined up this year and some con visits and shit. So that's gonna be fun. Well, no, he said he's gonna meet Dan Abnett and get his autograph and get his baby <laughs> signed and everything. <laughs> I just play Keyforge. No, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just waiting on Amber to hurry up and send me my share of those minis to pay. Oh, me. yes, I will. Trust yeah, me, Yeah, speaking dude, of will. that, yeah, because Scott oh, here is waiting yeah, for the, I, for I the have next some, thing. I have some things to show you. Um, there we go. Yeah, yeah well, I actually I actually finished, uh, finished the crates. And uh, Scott, if you're still listening, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint. Uh, well, I, not a hint. I, I hope you like Super Mario. Oh, I remember we talked about this. <laughs> I was like, oh, interesting. Oh, wait, I know about this. Yeah. Yes, you yeah, do yeah. know about this. So, uh, yeah. I, I was should, surprised I should have, there for a second. I should have some pictures up tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I had I had so much fun doing it. <laughs> so, um, I, hope, like uh, it. I hope, uh, I hope you all like it. All right, guys. Well, thanks, uh, Amber and Adam, for joining me. And we're going to meet again in this uh, same formula next time. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching us. The four of you who are still watching, thats <laughs> we, we basically lost about 20% of people. So that's great, great odds at this point uh, with the first one. Uh, so thanks for being with us for the first Gunco um, book club review, which just went everywhere and into a lot of subjects. And I don't think we're going to be able to keep to just one book and one subject going forward. And I don't really want to, um, you know, keep it boxed in like that because we have a lot of shit to talk about. And hopefully you've enjoyed yourself and yourselves. And you'll be back for uh, the next one. And um, yeah. Any final words, guys? Amber, Adam? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See y'all. Have a good night and uh, have as nice a day as you deserve tomorrow. <laughs>